Hi and welcome to my studio. My name is Lydia and today we're going to be painting Venus with Fly. It's a simple painting that anybody can do. I'll go over the materials that you'll need and I'll walk you through the process step by step. Grab your friends, your children, and something to stay hydrated and I'll meet you back at the easel. I'm working on an 8 by 24 inch stretched and primed canvas. You can certainly use any size that you feel comfortable with. I'm using acrylic paints and the paint colors on my palette are Cronacridone Magenta, Cadmium Red Medium, Cadmium Yellow Medium, Naples Yellow, Phthalo Green, Phthalo Blue, Dioxin Purple, Mars Black, and Titanium White. I'm going to be using three brushes, a one inch flat brush, a 3 8 inch angle brush and a small round brush. And again, you can switch up the brushes as well if you need to. You're also going to want some water for rinsing your brushes out. An old cloth of some sort or paper towels for drying your brushes. And a mister bottle for keeping everything nice and damp. So let's get started with the painting. All right, I'm gonna start by getting a background on the painting and I'm gonna go from a gradation of light to dark. And I'm gonna use my one inch flat brush to get that done. So I'm gonna dip my paint in the water and wipe off any excess. And then I'm gonna to come to my palette and I'm going to mix up mostly white. So I'm going to load my brush up with white. And I'm going to get quite a bit of this titanium white on both sides of the brush. So I loaded that up, both sides pretty thick. And I'm going to come down to my Diox Purple and I'm going to get a touch of that. So that's on one side. And I'm going to do a hint of the Quinacridone Magenta on the other. So I've got quite a bit of paint loaded on the brush. My brush is damp and I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to start by making crisscross strokes. So I'm going to cross, 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 cross. And I'm going to start working it all the way across. And don't forget to get the edges of your painting as you go. You want to make sure that you get the top and the sides. And you can always go back and paint it whatever color you want if you don't want to do the sides while you're working. I like to do it while I'm working. I'm going to go, without rinsing my brush, I'm going to dip it just a bit in the water, just a little bit. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to get a little bit more of just the titanium white. Got quite a bit of water on my brush there. And I'm just going to start up here at the top because I want this to be a little lighter, a little more white. And blend that in. There we go. You can go in each direction with your paint. So if you want to swipe it down, swipe it across until you get it the way you want it. So 
I'm gonna go back into my paint and I'm gonna pick up some more white, but not quite as much white this time. A hint of purple, dioxine purple, and a hint. So even less this time of the white, but a little bit of the purple and the quinacridone magenta as I move down, because I already have some of that quinacridone magenta and purple in my brush. And then we're gonna continue to work it down. So I came below where I started and I'm working it back up. We will see some of this background color, but we won't see a lot of it. It's gonna be covered up. Um, it'll be noticeable, but it won't be the main feature in our painting. And you can certainly change up the color if you like. Get a little bit more water on my brush. A little bit more white. So I'm doing a little more white, a little more purple. And I got less white this time, and I'm starting to pick up a little bit more of the purple and the quinacridone. So I want as it goes down to get a little bit more pigmented with the color. Mark it up in there. A little bit more water on my brush, and I'm going to blend that a little more. Again, I still have rem remnants of paint on the brush. Purple, a, quite a bit more purple, quite a bit more magenta, and then this time less white, so I can get a little darker. So I have less white, picking up a little bit more of that purple and magenta as I go. I'm coming down below where I started, and I'm pushing hard to get the paint to come off the brush, and then I'm doing the crisscross strokes to get it to blend in. If you find that it gets dry, I'm gonna dip it in my water a little bit and then wipe the excess water off and then come back and you can blend it a little better. And you can always use some sort of medium to blend in if you like. Getting my sides as I go. Gonna need a little bit more for the bottom, so again, magenta, dioxine purple, and white. Coming on down. A little water, wipe off the excess. Lay my brush flat to get some of that paint off. sides and once you have it the way that you like it I'm going to let this dry and we can rinse our one inch flat brush off and dry it and we'll come back and we'll go to the next step so while our painting is drying let's take a moment to go over the composition and how you can get your drawing on your canvas you certainly can freehand right on the canvas if you want. But what I thought I would do is go over the process that I take um, often with my paintings. And you can see here, I've taped two pieces of drawing paper together just from a sketch pad. And I made it so that I could trace around the outer edge of the size of my canvas. So the eight by 24 canvas I'm using, I made a tracing after I taped these two pieces together so that I can know where the size of my painting is and how I want to stay within that, those boundaries and how I may want to go out of those boundaries. So you can see here, I went a little bit outside of the boundaries on each side. It's always nice to take some of your painting off of your canvas. And then I've looked at some pictures of some, of course, some Venus fly traps and then embellished them. And I also have a little drawing of a fly 
And so a couple things to think about while you're drawing. You certainly can print out. Um, there's plenty of places online where you can go and print out photos of flies or anything that you want, really. Uh, I know I use iStock Photo quite a bit in looking at a photo of a fly, or you can just go out and research flies, what they look like, different types of flies. And this particular fly I found had two big red eyes and an orangish blue body. But if you are thinking about how you want to sketch your drawing, I think of the Venus that I'm drawing here as more of a, almost like an open taco shell. So it's just a big arch and coming down and making another big arch. And then I do want it to look like it has gums. So I have this little third arch that I put in the center. And then the teeth are just triangles. So if you think of things in shapes, maybe what something looks like, so it looks like a, a taco or a half circle, a half oval, then that helps you visualize in your mind how you want to get your drawing on. Also, I just have, this kind of reminds me in a way of, um, you can always look at old masters like Gustav Klimt, his tree painting and the way he painted his trees were this almost surreal, fantastical look to them. So with the curly cues, kind of took from that a little bit. And also my fly, if you think about your fly, it actually looks kind of like a, a whole cashew with a little rounded triangle head and then a few wings coming off. So once I decide what I want to include within my composition, I take tracing paper and I also do the same thing with the tracing paper. I'll trace over, I'll put it up uh, over my image and trace over the tracing paper. And that way, once I get my tracing paper completed, I've worked out all the issues that I want to work out within my drawing, I can trace it. And then what I'll do is I'll put my tracing over my canvas. So if this is the canvas that we're waiting to dry with the background color on it, I place this over it. But between the, trans the, the tracing paper, I can use the transfer paper. And I like to use the Serral tracing paper and it comes in a few different colors. And I'll put a piece of that behind the tracing paper. So between the tracing paper and the canvas, and I'll just trace the image on. So you certainly can freehand, but if you need help, and we all need some assistance sometimes getting our drawings on our canvas, it's a great way to work out the process and then come back once you've worked all of the issues out, have things the way you want them, and then start to get it on your canvas without having to worry about a lot of erasing on your canvas. So I'm gonna trace this onto my canvas and then we'll come back and we'll keep going with the painting. So what I did is I traced my image on and I went ahead and painted the main body of the Venus flytrap just so you can see it a little better. Um, it's got just a light green color to it. No, that's not the color we're going to be painting it, but I wanted you to be able to see it. So I'm gonna mix up, I have some here. I've mixed up some phthalo blue with some cadmium yellow and a hint of the cadmium red medium. And I want it to be a really fairly dark green and that cadmium red will help darken it a little bit. So then I'm just gonna take my 3 8 inch angle brush and just start filling it in. So make sure you have some dampness on your brush as you're moving. And the great thing about having an angle brush and the reason I'm using the angle brush is I can go around these edges closely. And this is just gonna be the base coat. We will be adding some highlights. I just wanna get this base coat on. And you can see how I'm taking the very top chiseled edge of the brush and I'm putting it right up against the edge of where I want my line to be. And I'm just drawing that edge down. And you can flip it either way, it feels comfortable for you. So I'm painting at an angle, which makes it a little more challenging but you can definitely take your time and work on it as needed. 
So I'm gonna get a little more water on the brush, pick up a little bit more of my paint and just continue on. And the great thing too about having the angle brush is that when I get to the areas that are really these narrow areas, I can turn it so that the tip, the longest tip of the angle brush is right into those little areas. And I can just pull it without a lot of pressure and work it up so I get right at the tip. Make sure you have enough paint on the edge of the brush, the chiseled edge, and I turn that little point down and pull it up. And you can get that point. And that's the same as when you're painting these little tendrils that are coming off of the Venus flytrap's main body, you can turn your brush and it helps to place your pinky down with that pointy edge right on that tip and you can start the tip and turn it as you go. If you don't feel comfortable with your angle brush, you can always take this small round brush to get into those smaller areas as needed. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this in more paint on the brush. And remember when you want a lot of paint placed down, you push the brush to get the paint off and then you can work the paint where you want it, going right along the edge. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this and we'll come back for the next step. So we're going to go ahead and fill in the areas between the teeth. And if you get, if you start working on this with your small round brush and you get into the tooth area, no worries because we're going to go in and put white on the teeth. And even if there is some red, we want a little red on the teeth as well. And you'll see later on how that all comes together. So I have my small round brush and I've mixed up some, mostly I have the cadmium red medium and the quinacridone magenta. So it's mostly cad red with some quinacridone magenta. And I'm rolling my brush in to get a lot of paint on to the round brush and have a little point to the brush so that I can go in and get in between where my teeth are. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to go back in with the white over the teeth and fill it in. And we, we do want some of this red on the teeth anyway. And we're going to be working with that later on. So you can see I'm just going in between each tooth, keeping my brush moist with some paint on it. And I've made the teeth so that they are going from big to small. So they start big in the center and they get smaller as we go down this each side. And as we get small on this side, it's gonna be barely noticeable with, with the teeth, but we'll come back in and define a few of those small triangles. So I'll give you the illusion of teeth on the smaller side and that will be the same over here as well. And while I have a little bit of this red on my brush, I'm gonna go ahead and put the red in for the fly eyes. And I will be zooming you in a little more when we do the fly. Just go ahead and have 
that started a little bit. Then I'm going to rinse my brush. And it's okay if the red is still a little wet. And even if you have a small amount of red in your brush, it's okay. I'm going to dip into my titanium white. And you can see I do have a little bit of red just kind of rolling out of that brush, and that's okay. I'm going to come in and just start filling in. The white of the teeth. Again, I'm just picking up a little more paint. So I'm rolling my brush in the paint. And remember, you can make this your painting, if you'd rather have um, a tongue just kind of coming out and grabbing at the fly, this is your painting so you can create it any way you like. The idea is that you've got a a Venus flytrap that wants out that fly, and in your world, you can have it get the fly and have the fly have a bad day, or you can have it escape and have a good day, or you can have the Venus flytrap have a good or bad day. It's all up to you. Just going to continue to work around and get all these little teeth in. All right. And so what I'm going to go ahead and do, I know everything's still a little wet, is I'm going to keep this white paint that's left in my brush, and I'm going to come in and pick up just a little bit of this red color that I have. And I'm going to go along the top edge of the teeth, so it's almost as though I'm trying to create a nice little gum area. So I'm just following the curve of the Venus flytrap mouth. brush and I paint some more. I'm just kind of rolling it in and I'm just following along the curve. More water on my brush. If your paint's not flowing the way you want it to, you can always get a little more water on the brush. doing that area on the top and now I'm going to also do the same thing on the bottom curve of what would be considered the mouth. And I think I'm going to add just a little bit of a darker red in some areas between the teeth. <clears throat> so I'm actually going to take some of this quinacridone and mix it in with a little bit more of this cadmium red. I'm going to come down here to a little bit of my, just a hint of my phthalo green, just grab a bit of it and I'm just going to mix it in. And that darkens my red even more. And I'm just going to come in and just start filling in some darker areas here and there. And 
once you have it the way you like it, we're going to rinse our brush and we're going to put some low lights and highlights on. So I'm going to make this side of our Venus flytrap a little darker and a little lighter on this side to give it more of a, a rounded feel. And up in the higher areas where it's lighter, I want to put some sunlight and maybe where I think sunlight may be hitting on some of the tendrils. And then I'll go ahead and um, start working on getting some highlights on the teeth. So I'm using my 3 8 inch angle brush and I'm mixing up some phthalo blue with some phthalo green. It's mostly going to be phthalo green. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of my red, cadmium red medium. And I want to make sure that this is more on the green side. So I'm going to mix a little white here and see what it looks like if I were to add white. All right, so that's good. I want it to be dark. All right, let's see what that looks like on my green. All right, that's it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm just going to sweep some of this color up and just kind of blend it in. So I'm just making a little rounded motion here just to kind of blend some of that color out. And then what I can do is go back into this original color with more of my yellow and phthalo blue and just start to kind of come to the middle and blend that over into that darker color. And it, I like to kind of sweep down with it and then just kind of blend it out. And you do want your brush to have some dampness in it. If it doesn't have um, some dampness or if you're not using some sort of blending medium, it makes the blending a little bit more challenging. And then I'm going to come over to my cadmium yellow and I'm going to come to this side now and add a little bit more of that cadmium yellow. So I'm going to swipe that down and just blend it in. And you can use your little X strokes again if you need to do a little more blending. Right. And I'm going to do that all the way down. So I'm going to grab a little bit more of the phthalo green, a little bit of the blue, cadmium red. And I'm just going to start to take this darker color, mix that red in a little more, take that darker color down along the edge. And I'm just going to start making sweeping motions to the center. And when you get to the tendrils, so the tendrils with the darker color, you're going to have more of the shadow on the bottom. So you can take that color onto the bottom and sweep it up. And it's the same with this tendril as well. And then we'll get some of that, put a little more water on my brush, get some of that green me a little lighter and then we'll come in some more of that medium color and we'll blend that down and kind of sweep it over just like we did up at the top and we'll do it here so we're just blending that darker color in and we'll do it here and the same here and then we'll add a little bit of that cadmium yellow and come back in on the lighter side So I'm going to do a little sweep down, straight down, and let's do a little, just a wiggle motion to blend it in. A little bit more of that highlight color. I especially want a little highlight right here 
where the turn in this tendril is. And so there's some sunlight hitting that little turn. And I'll get a little bit more of my green and just kind of blend that in. So blending takes a little practice. And there's different ways you can blend. All right, I'm liking that. I want a little sunlight to hit here, so I'm gonna get a little of that. Again, pick, picking up more of that light color. Take a little bit of my lighter color, and bring it up here, and just kind of blend it in. up a little more yellow because I want that to be a little brighter because I want to bring your attention up here. This is where all the action is happening. So I want your attention to come up here. So I'm just going to make sure that it's brighter up here. I'm going to go back into my dark color. Now things are going to get a little darker down at the bottom of the painting. So I'm going to come down here and sweep on that darker color. And get, make sure your brush stays damp. Kind of blend all that in. Get some more of that darker color. I'm gonna have it really darker down here because it's down at the very bottom. And if you want, you can pull up some grasses through here. And then I'm gonna get some of the medium color. I don't want too much sunlight here, but there may be a little bit. But I do want to get some of that dark color on the bottom of this branch as well. Make sure I get it on that one. So I'm going back into my little dark color. So again, that's green. So it's a phthalo green with a little phthalo blue, more green than blue, and a hint of the red. Cadmium red takes it back. There we go. So get some of that, and then I'll take some of that green and bring it back here, and we can blend that in as well. So you can do as much blending as you want. I'm gonna do a little shadow where all of these kind of meet, just to make it look more like these little branches are connected. And then I'm gonna dip, I'm not gonna rinse my brush, but I'm gonna dip into some of my Naples yellow. I'll bring it over here so you can see. I'm just gonna mix that up. Anything that's on my brush, I want it to be a little more green than that. I'm going to add some of that phthalo green. And then I'm just going to come around and maybe hit a few areas. I'm going to go a little lighter. I want that to be a little bit lighter. Just maybe here or there. Just wiping and just blending. I'm just going to wet my brush a little and I just want to rub some of this excess paint out so I can just blend it a little more. So you can step back, look at it, see if maybe there's something else you want to add to it. And hit the little areas. I'm going to blend some of that Naples yellow in here and there. And just kind of hit it and be done with it. Hit it and be done with it. Do a little even here. A little Naples yellow. 
Let me think there might be a little bit more light hitting. There we go. We just added a little Naples yellow, a little bit of that phthalo green and some white. I'm just kind of going along and just getting some areas here and there. And you can take a step back, see if you like it. I'm going to rinse this brush out. I'm not going to break yet. I'm just going to go right into switching into my small round brush. And I'm going to hit some highlights of white on my teeth. So I'm just going to pick up, it's just titanium white only. I'm just going to come around and just hit some highlights. Once I get a little highlight on each, I'm doing the left side of each tooth. Just, it doesn't have to be every tooth if you don't want it to be. And then I'm going to take, once the paint's kind of off the brush a little bit, I'll be blending it. Get a little bit more white on my brush. And this is where you can make your teeth a little more pointed if you want. I'm dipping my brush into my white paint and I'm gonna come and just put a little point right at the end of each tooth by just putting it on the end and pulling it up. A little more white on my brush. A little point and pull down, point and pull down, point and pull down. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to re refine the gum area a little more. So I'm going to go in and pick up my cadmium red and magenta mix. I'm going to actually go in and put some of this in the middle first, kind of brighten up some of this red areas. And then we'll add a few of these little red areas to the gum and make that little bit of that creep factor if you want a little bit more of that. Okay, I'm going to step back, take a look. I think I'm going to take a little bit of my titanium white and just go around one last time and just hit a few white highlights. And we're gonna hang on to our small round brush. I'll zoom you in and we'll work on the fly. Okay, so we are zoomed in to our fly and I have mixed up some phthalo blue with some Naples yellow. And your fly can be whatever color you want. And this is gonna be one of those flies that has that greenish blue color. And I'm going to come around to the bottom part of this first little area and just start making little circular motions to get that blue on. And then I'm going to go in to my titanium white, not rinsing the brush, and I'm going to mix up some of that white into the color that I have on my brush. And I'm going to go up to the top and just kind of move that around as well. And you can take your finger and just kind of dot 
how you want it. So it blends in a little bit. So that gives you that round effect. So you can do that with your finger if you want. You can get some of the paint off your little round brush. Just wipe it off and go in and make little circular motions to blend it that way as well. And so then I'm gonna do the same thing with the little back side. So I'm gonna start with the darker color down at the bottom. And it's okay if you cover up your wing outline, we're gonna put that back in. Just making little circular motions. Then go back into the lighter color. So back in my lighter color, a little more of that white. Blend that in and then come in and make little circular motions. And then I'm gonna wipe my brush off and just blend. So when you do that, if you have the blending in the middle, so you've got your light to your medium to your dark color and it makes everything look a little bit more rounded. All right. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go even a little lighter. I'm gonna take the white and I'll go up beside this, still have some of that blue color and then I'll go up to the top and I'll just add a little white. Wipe the brush off and then blend that in. There you go. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my black, so I'm gonna get the blue paint off. It's okay if you still have a little blue paint. I'm gonna get most of the blue paint off of my brush. I'm gonna go into my Mars black and roll that around. And so, the same idea with the head is I'm gonna go around the bottom edge to make it a little darker. Then I'm gonna get a little white. I'm not rinsing my brush off. I'm just gonna dip a little bit into one of my areas of titanium white and just kind of mix that up into my brush and come around the top edge and just kind of dot some of that on and then I'll wipe my brush off and then blend. And that makes everything look a little more rounded. All right, then I'm gonna get my brush clean. And I do want this next bit to be a little wetness to it. So I'm going to make sure that I get a little water. I'm gonna dip it into my Mars Black. And I want this to be a little inky. So I'm gonna run my brush through it and it's very liquidy. And I don't want so much of the paint on my brush. So I'm gonna wipe just a little bit of it off. So a little excess. And I'm just gonna come back in. I've got a point on my brush. And I'm going to come in and just outline my wings a little more. And if you start to lose a little bit of the paint on the brush, you don't want too much. So you can do it a little bit at a time. There we go. And then what I'm going to do, so the wings of a fly are pretty clear. So I'm going to just make some little, and you can do whatever design you want. I'm just gonna do a few little zigzags here and there to simulate that you can see the color of the background through these wings, but they're somewhat see-through. So I'm gonna come back into my paint, my black paint again, and roll it around, it's kind of wet. And I'm gonna make sure I have a little point on my brush. And I do that, so I make sure I have a point because I'm rolling it, I'm rolling the brush and pulling it. Rolling and pulling. And if you have too much paint, you can kind of wipe some of that off on your paper towel. And I'm gonna refine my legs just a smidge here. I'm liking the way they're looking for the most part, but I need to connect them. And I'm gonna step back a little bit. I'm gonna roll my brush and my paper towel a little more. Kind of get the, there we go. Kind of get my little cabinet 
I want the legs to come to a little bit more of a point there. There we go. And I'm gonna get the black out of my brush. And I'm gonna take the very point of my brush. I'm just dipping my brush lightly into my white. And I'm gonna come back and hit a few light little highlights on my legs. Another light little highlight on the top of the head. And then I'm going to hit a few of this white highlight on the wings. Pick up a little bit more of that black. So I'm going to come back in and refine this leg a little bit here. Here, there we go. So they look a little bigger. If so, I'm going to rinse my brush out, and you want to make sure you get all the black out of your brush. I'm going to come into my red, just the cad red, and I'm going to come up here and I'm going to round out these eyes a little more. And then I'm going to add just a smidge of the white to that red. So I'm just getting a little cat red and I'm going to roll it in. And all I want to do, not too much paint on your brush, let's do a little dot, dot, a little dot there. There we go. And the fly does have these two little things at the tip of their nose. So I'm gonna get some more black on my brush. I don't want too much paint on my brush. So I just wanna put a little, something on the end there. Just, so I'm gonna zoom you back out and we have one last step and that's the sign the painting. All right, now that we've finished the painting, our last step is to sign the painting. And I think I'm going to sign it down at the bottom on the trunk of the Venus flytrap there. I'm mixing up some paint. And I'm just gonna come down and I'm actually gonna go down sideways. So there's the L. And if you have trouble signing sideways, you can always flip it. There you go, a completed painting. I hope you Thank you for keeping me company today. I hope you enjoyed yourself and created something special. Until next time, bye-bye.